we're off to one of the world's most famous scotch distilleries like scottish kids become whiskey ambassadors indian kids become it engineers and that's what i did that lady told me the best sentence that i've ever heard she said that angad you make money and you put that money to buy whiskey you spend it all on whiskey we gonna give you money to drink whiskey <laughs> my first whiskey memories and i've mentioned this to you before yeah. where uh, of my granddad uh, drinking his little evening dram of uh, glenfiddich and typically glenfiddich well 1887 christmas day 25th of december is where the first drops of the liquid came down the stills so in 1969 it was the first time that a distillery opened a whiskey center in scotland and the first place where he made his first sale was the taj hotel at the gateway mm-hmm. of india the taj palace hotel uh in 1909 uh glenfiddich ipa and the glenfiddich project 20 are first to experiments from the experimental series hey everyone welcome back to the discover series with the whiskey advisor i am uday balaji so this week we're off to one of the world's most famous scotch distilleries and we're going to be discovering all things glenfiddich with brand ambassador angad singh gandhi hey angad how are you doing hey uday hello everybody thank you all for joining one well, such a pleasure to have you here angad but just before we jump into our conversation i just like to quickly ask everyone as always to please like subscribe and hit that little bell so you'll get notified every time we have uh, a new video in this series so i see angad you're all set so what do you have in your glass i have a monday afternoon work dram the glenfiddich 18 <laughs> year old uh uh-huh. in office we say that this dram has voting rights in india so it's the serious dram of our series <laughs> <laughs> okay I, i don't think i've got voting rights uh, yet but i've got the 12 same uh, cask recipe you mean the same casks for 12 and the 18 uh, x bourbon mm-hmm. and x uh, sherry a marriage uh, different ratios for sure and 6 mm-hmm. years of poor maturation but uh, this this beautiful baby comes uh, is made in small batches which is 150 casks maximum at a time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So again, Brand Kingsman's favorite whiskey, our Mort Master's favorite whiskey. So, uh, cheers to Can Brand whatever it is. <laughs> all right, cheers, and uh, cheers to all of you. I hope you have a dram in your hand. This is going to be a cracker of a conversation. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. So, Angad, when we have. Um, some one of the series the brand ambassadors they've generally been from like you know uh, they've been a distiller or some sort of industry background but your background is fairly unconventional and it is almost uh, serendipitous how you ended up getting into the whiskey industry can you tell us a little more so i mean you're very right in saying it's unconventional because of the role i'm in but my background is one of the most conventional backgrounds <laughs> any average indian kid would have you know like Scottish kids become whiskey ambassadors. Indian kids become IT engineers, and that's what I did. Learned IT engineering uh, back in the day. Worked in Oracle, an IT company, mm-hmm. for a couple of years, and figured it out that this is not my uh, dram of whiskey, rather cup of tea. <laughs> and uh, then I went for a B school, which is the next most obvious choice for an engineer. Uh, went to a B school in India itself and joined the bank. uh mm-hmm. hsbc worked with them for a few years in understanding uh the financial worlds what corporate culture is all about and you know my profile was quite uh i was lucky to have a profile of a relationship corporate manager where i had to take mm-hmm. the uh clients out for drinks and dinner and you know uh try to sell as much as of the brand products i can and make increase the wallet share of the brand to the maximum and that's where the whole uh love of whiskey actually grew uh for me but it started quite early for me because my father introduced me to whiskey while i was 18 years old and whiskey was always something that was in the household as a part of growing up since we were so that was the earlier inspiration to it but later i got super excited and enticed towards it and pretty much the money that i was making in the bank was <laughs> going to buy a nice whiskey <laughs> till a point like uh i met some people you know in a party in bombay and that's why i always say that for me uh my work has been more of 
my passion, uh, the timing in my life, and my travel. A mix of these things has uh, made me help become a brand ambassador. And the passion for whiskey was always there. The timing was right because I was in that particular party bartending at a friend's yeah. house mm-hmm. where I met the recruiters from uh, Michael Page. And I had no idea that they are like recruiters or they are like friends' friend, And this nominated my name after chatting with me for about half an hour over a cocktail. And, uh, and that's uh, where it all started from in my case. Uh, they invited me for an interview here for becoming the brand ambassador. I was like, what is it all about? What, what is an ambassador about? For, for us as a layman, an ambassador is someone who comes on television. <laughs> so that lady told me the best sentence that I ever heard. She, and that's the sentence that actually inspired me the most. And she said that, Angad, you make money and you put that money to buy whiskey. You spend it all on whiskey. We're going to give you money to drink whiskey. <laughs> so that's the deal that you are going to crack today. And that line, I think, did the, did the rest for me. Like, it inspired me to, you know, be 100%, give my 100% in the process. And then 17, then I started as a brand ambassador for Glenn Fiddick. So, yeah. Fantastic. Mm. It's, it's a great story, you know. I'm glad you made it to that party. But to get to know you a little better, what we're going to do is do a quick rapid fire round. Sure. Yeah. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Your first whiskey. Shiva Sriga, 12 year old. Ah, like a good Indian boy again. Huh? <laughs> like, uh, like a daddy's boy, to be honest. <laughs> um, your favorite bar? Uh, in India or like anywhere in the world? Anywhere, anywhere. Panda and Sons, uh, Edinburgh. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, your favorite food? Indian food. Uh-huh. So like, when I had, uh, you want to know so where in India from? Like what cuisine in India? Please, please, yeah. I, uh, I'm these days obsessing over Keralite food a lot. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. so come visit, we're just 45 minutes away. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's the plan. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, what's your favorite sport? Uh, football, undoubtedly. Cricket and football will be very close as, a, as growing up in India. These two sports are religion for us and that's what I played too, but uh, football now, more because mm-hmm. I can play. Cats or dogs? Dogs, 100%. Books or music? Music. Mm -hmm. Beaches or mountains? Now that's the tricky one. Uh, Because I've lived my initial days on mountains because my father was posted in Dharamshala. So I have Mm -hmm. an affinity, a natural affinity towards mountains. But uh, I love beaches too, man. Just the nature, Mm -hmm. baby. You put me there. uh, Mm -hmm. I just run on into the water. So uh, for now, I would like to say beaches. All right. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Batman or Superman? Oh, <laughs> Bat- <laughs> Batman for sure. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right. So let's close out with your favorite whiskey memory. My favorite whiskey memory. I mean, as you asked me right in the beginning, my first whiskey was a uh, sugar twelve year old that my father made me drink when, uh, right, a month before I turned eighteen and. You know, he said that, I, I know you're going to drink a lot of different things in your life, Angad. They're going to be different spirits, but there's one thing that I want you to have with me. And this is that whiskey that I really believe in and really like, and I've been enjoying it. So why not? And I wish that would have been a glint for it back then. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but he had glint for it, but you know, it was his natural love towards more of blends. And I mm-hmm. personally enjoyed more of uh, malts. So that was where we opened our own bottles nowadays. Like he has uh-huh. things on his own bottle. I'll do it from my own bottle. Uh, but another amazing whiskey memory of me after being uh, selected as a brand ambassador when I was in Scotland for the very first time. And one of my mentors asked me to join him for uh, breakfast for tea early in the morning. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was all night, you know, I thought that it's going to be tea and breakfast. <laughs> Whereas if somebody in Scotland invites you for tea and wants to chat about whiskey, then mm-hmm. prepare whiskey. your palate early up in the day because that's going to be a whiskey breakfast. <laughs> and it was for a cold morning. It was in January, if I'm not wrong. And I'm drinking, sipping whiskey early up in the day. And for the first time when the person told me about the idea of it, I was like taken aback. I was like, sir, I might not be able to 
uh, come to your levels of breaking up so early. And then, then it just like, you know, chilled out. He was like uh, really, really inspiring, motivating. And he just spoke me into the conversation, gave me a dram, made me understand it, drink it. And then it felt really easy, you know. And that's what made me understand that uh, it's not that you can drink a beverage at certain time of the day and enjoy it the most. It's also the atmosphere that you can build around it to enjoy it. Absolutely. And uh, cold weather helps as well, doesn't it? 100%. 100%. Yeah. But I'm glad you brought up the memory uh, with dad because for me, uh, my first whiskey memories, and I've mentioned this to you before, yeah. where uh, of my granddad uh, drinking his little evening dram of uh, Glenfiddich and typically Glenfiddich 12. So quite right. a few really wonderful memories, you know, uh, family memories associated with that. Uh, and then when I went to Scotland, the first distillery I went to in Space Side was actually the Glenfiddich distillery because of that memory and uh, also because I love the 15 year old Solera. So I wanted to see that process. But I'd love to know a little more about the Glenfiddich origins and, uh, you know, about the distillery as well. I've seen you like coopering in some pictures and stuff. How did that <laughs> <Yeah>. go? <laughs> I, will, I will definitely talk about it today. But uh, just to uh, finish our last topic, I had a small mm -hmm. point there to mention. Uh, since last three years that I've been the master for the country, uh, I've, I've uh, really been overwhelmed with people's love and, you know, respect for the brand that they hold for such long times. I mean, I've, I've met people in their 80s coming and mm -hmm. telling me that this was the first single mall that they ever had. And they've been having it since probably 1975, 1976 and so many years of, you know, legacy that this brand has. And that's probably that makes me love my job to a great extent. You know, when, mm -hmm. when somebody comes and tells you something like that, even today, sometimes I still get goosebumps when an old person comes and tells you that, that you're doing a great job and great uh, to learn from you these things that I never knew in my entire life. And I've been drinking the brand for probably last mm -hmm. 50 years. And that's what, you know, gives you that excitement about that job. So Glenfiddich was the first single mall ever to be taken outside of Scotland in 1963. And, you know, before that, the world was mostly consuming blended uh, whiskey and cognac, whereas single malt was more of a Scottish secret. Uh, mm -hmm. And in 63, a guy called Sandy Gordon, William Grant's great grandson, uh, took a flight and went to New York to the mm -hmm. Wall Street and uh, started the whole category of single malt whiskeys, you know. So that's, that's one of the greatest things that somebody could have done, you know, to start a whole category. And that's why we made the experimental series as well because we thought that mm -hmm. it's a very important duty for us to uh, take the industry forward take the entire single malt drinking concept forward as if you are writing the rules then you rewrite them and it's very important for you to tell the world that okay single malt now is not only about that you know leather chair cigar brand mm -hmm. it's it's a very convenient drink that anybody of any age and any gender across the world can have and enjoy it. So uh, that's something that I'm really, really proud of uh, being associated with Glenfiddich. Uh, with uh, coming to your current question about the distillery, mm -hmm. so William Grant uh, used to work for 20 years in a distillery called the Montlock Distillery. Uh, it's still a very good distillery there in Speyside. And uh, at 46 uh, in 1886 was the year when he decided that he has made enough money and uh, enough kids to start a distillery. <laughs> William had nine kids, seven sons mm -hmm. and two daughters. William, his kids and his wife Elizabeth actually started making this distillery, uh, the Glenfiddich in the Valley of the Deer and that's why the whiskey is called the Glenfiddich. Mm -hmm. uh, Fiddich there be, means uh, the Deer and uh, 1887 Christmas Day, 25th of December is where the first drops of the liquid came down the stills with a dream of uh, William for making the best dram in the valley. Uh, 130 years later, Glenfiddich probably is uh, the highest selling single malt whiskey across the world and uh, also the world's most awarded single malt whiskey. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are so many things in the history and the passion of this family of making whiskey that actually contributed to it. It was, if I would say that it was only William then I would not be doing justice to a lot of people who paid a huge role in this distillery. It's still run by the same family, by the fifth generation, sixth generation of the same family. And 
the biggest strength this distillery have, and I'm sure Gemma would have also put some light mm -hmm. on our last session, is the people who work at in this distillery. So we have about 150 people working at the Glenfiddich distillery, and these people have been generations and generations of craftsmen who have given their life for the beautiful liquid for us in different parts of the world to enjoy it. And I don't think that this whiskey would have been po possible to co-create and create and keep on creating with the same consistency without these craftsmen. We are stillsmen, Sir Dennis McBain, or uh, our uh, mod masters, Brian Kingsman. It's been, and, and you meet these guys, you chat with them, you see that they're so down to earth, so easy to chat with, and they're like, heaps of knowledge that they would like to share and their sons and families and relatives and all into the process of making whiskey. Even our global brand ambassador Struan uh, mm -hmm. mentions when he used to go to school, he used to probably cross about four distilleries on his way as a kid. So it's, it's these craftsmen that has made this distillery come all this way. And uh, to add to that, right now we are going uh, expansion at the Glenfiddich distillery. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, we are one of the most humongous single malt distilleries in the world. So we make about 13 to 14 uh, million lakhs, uh, sorry, million liters per annum a year. And probably by next year, once the expansion is complete, we'll be making about 20 million liters per annum mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. So the COVID actually delayed the entire process. We were looking for a completion of the the new uh, wings of the distillery uh, this year. But we're really looking forward to uh, once the expansion is complete. Well, it's fabulous. When I went itself, it was such a large facility. I can only imagine another 7 million liters being added to that. Absolutely beautiful uh, and, oh, they, still house. One more point, one more point mm -hmm. there. Uh, you know, uh, visitor center, as you visit it, is something which is very common right now in the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of distilleries have visitor center for uh, people to visit. But back in the 60s, this wasn't the concept. There, there was no distillery in Scotland that actually had a visitor center which is open to tourists and whiskey enthusiasts from around the world. Mm -hmm. So in 1969, it was the first time that a distillery opened a visitor center in Scotland. And that was the Glenfellig distillery. The first one to have mm -hmm. uh, inviting journalists and you know, consumers, customers, enthusiasts, for all different tours and showing them what this craft is all about and just taking them through, not hiding anything. That and showing them like live how we are making whiskey. And that's the whole beauty of it since 1969. So that's what also makes mm -hmm. uh, it a little bit special. Well, it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, going to a whiskey distillery is one of the best experiences uh, that I've wow. ever had in my life and constantly keep going to them as well. And you always learn something new. And you know, you get those distillery special drams and stuff, it doesn't get any better. 100%, 100% mm -hmm. of that, yeah. But uh, you know, I've done a little bit of reading and in our past conversations as well, we've spoken about how uh, India has a much longer connect with uh, Glenfiddich. Uh, so could you just tell us a little more about that India and Glenfiddich connect? Sure. So. Uh... Glenfiddich as a single malt, you know, came to India, to be honest, in probably the 70s. But what mm -hmm. came to India from the family before was a whiskey called the Grand Standfast Whiskey. Now, William Grant came from the Grant's clan. So in Scotland, we have clans and uh, mm -hmm. Grant's were fighters and their war cry was Standfast. And that's why the Grant Whiskey has the Standfast uh, up mm -hmm. there. So in 1909, a uh, gentleman called Charles Gordon. So Charles was William's son-in-law and Charles Gordon was actually a teacher in one of the schools in Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, in those days, uh, Uday, early 1900s, uh, schools were actually operating in Scotland only in winters. In summers, the kids were actually working in the farms uh, for the produce of the crop. And uh, Charles used to go to his school, which was three miles, in snow, like four or five feet of snow. Uh, and that was probably the biggest inclination and motivation and something that William saw in Charles who made him the, you know, in charge for distribution and sales for the host of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So in those times, 
there were no planes to travel to India. There were ships and ships took months and months to travel from one country to the other. So in 1909, uh, in September, Charles Gordon uh, set sails for India and told his wife that we'll be back damn soon. And he, the first place where he actually stopped uh, his ship was Mumbai. Uh, and the first place where he made his first sail was the Taj Hotel at the Gateway mm -hmm. of India, the Taj Palace right. Hotel uh, in 1909. And I still have those letters and records that he used to send back to the distillery and I'll be sharing it with you oh, as well. So in those, he has the, the, the on the letterheads of the hotels, he has orders of whiskey that was shipped to India. So he traveled to Bombay, Lucknow, New Delhi, up to Lahore, Karachi, uh, which was all India at that time, to uh, mm -hmm. Calcutta, uh, Ahmedabad, uh, not Ahmedabad, uh, Calcutta, Indore, uh, down in Chennai, and uh, in Bangalore, and covered India pretty much back in the day as well. Uh, mm -hmm. and then moved from here to the other parts of Southeast Asia, to, to Bhutan, to uh, as far as Australia. Uh, completed his one year tour in September and then he went back. So that's the pioneering example of distribution and, you know, start of sales that this company had in India back in 1909. And since then we've been enjoying the product. Whereas Glenfiddich as a product came quite later in the day. Uh, but another really interesting fact is that what this family has done for the evolution of single malt. Because at that time, the cost of Blended whiskey and single malt whiskey, if you remember, was the same in any pub of Scotland. Either you will order a pure whiskey or you will order a pure malt. If you go there, pure whiskey means a blended whiskey and pure malt meant a malt whiskey. But the cost was the same. There was no difference in the cost, which later transformed a higher cost for the malt whiskeys when from pure malt it became straight malt and from straight mm -hmm. malt eventually it became single malt. Okay, wonderful. It, it could be really fascinating, you know, if he'd written about his uh, journey, what India was like back then and what his travels were like back then. It will be fascinating to read. I have, uh, I have some of the notes there and I would mm -hmm. love to share it with you. I have a picture of him sitting on a, on a, on a tanga, mm -hmm. a tanga that you call yeah. the horse mm -hmm. the carriage. And, yeah. you know, I have a few of his snaps and memories of, from India and uh, him, uh, talking about how hospitality in those days mm -hmm. already was in India and the level of comfort and luxury. Because that time it was, it was ruled by the Britishers as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a really, really, really happy being in India. So I'll definitely share a few letters with you. Please do. That'll be a fascinating read. <laughs> and, but <laughs> so, again, sticking with India for a minute, uh, what expressions of uh, Glenfiddich do we have in, uh, in India, Angad? And also the broader portfolio across the world. So, in India, uh, first we'll talk about what is available in the domestic market and then I'll also mm -hmm. like to talk a little bit on which is different uh, in our uh, global travel retail, GTR, has the B2B shops. Mm -hmm. So, we start the range in India with our classic expression, the Glen for a 12 year old that you would see pretty much in every shop, every mm -hmm. hotel, every restaurant across the country. Uh, one of the highest selling malls in the country, uh, followed by a Glen for 15 year old, uh, which is my favorite and our favorite mm -hmm. expression yeah. from mm -hmm. this community, the classic, unique Solera Reserve, uh, uh, the one that has actually been winning us maximum awards from years and years, followed by a Glenfiddich 18 year old, uh, which comes in a box like this, uh, mm -hmm. made in small batches, uh, as I was mentioning before, about 150 casks at a time. Uh, Followed by a Glenferic 21 year old that I am currently not having at my home. Uh, Glenferic 21 is a rum cask finish, a Caribbean rum cask finish, uh, a 21 year old whiskey finished in uh, Caribbean rum cask for which we actually uh, buy rum from sellers, make our rum and put that into the cask to, you know, season those casks. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, again, a very special whiskey. Uh, now to think of it, I'll give you a small idea how special a 21-year-old is from any distillery. 
only 5% of the whiskies made in the world are single malts and only 5% of those whiskies are actually aged for 21 year old malts. So 0.025% is what we're talking about mm -hmm. from the entire pool. 21 is followed by a 26 year old whiskey, which is slightly uncommon to find. Uh, but again, in Delhi, Gurgaon, Bombay, uh, Bangalore, uh, you still get your hands on these. Uh, very, very special whiskey. Uh, and, now, and then we have our experimental series. So we have we had the Glenfiddich 30 also till a few years back, but now we don't have much of allocation of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But we have the Glenfiddich experimental series, which is again a fantastic whiskey. Uh, this is my uh, preferred one out of the two that we have. Oh, yeah. in these mm -hmm. But these two beauties is what I personally launched in India uh, in 2018. Very uh, soon when I started work, uh, Glenferic IPA and the Glenferic Project 20, they were launched in the world in 2016, if I'm not wrong. Our first two experiments from the experimental series, first single malt to be finished in an IPA cask. And this is a marriage of 20 different casks from the Glenferic distillery. Uh, a whiskey made by 20 different malt masters from across the world. And mm -hmm. here that you see the sign, uh, this Thumb impression is an amalgamation of thumb impressions of 20 different malt masters from okay. across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, this has about uh, 17 X bourbon barrels, 2 X sherry barrels, and 1 port wine pipe. Married mm -hmm. in this 47 ABV and uh, candy floss and uh, summer spice is what we look in this one. So that's pretty much our range here in India for the for Glen Fedek. Uh, Currently, but we are looking at launching a couple of products probably 20, 21, 22. Uh, whereas the duty free is concerned, we have a select cask, a reserve cask, mm -hmm. which are, are both non age uh, variants, amazing whiskies, very, very soft, delicate, and extremely characterful as well. The reserve cask, uh, which is followed by a Glenferic 15 distillery edition, which is a little different from this one, uh, as that one is non-chill filtered, this one is chill filtered, and that one is probably a cast strength, much more uh, strengthful than mm -hmm. this one. This one is about 40 ABV, that one is, if I'm not wrong, is about uh, 51 ABV, or maybe mm -hmm. uh, something, like, something like that. Uh, very, very characterful mod. The only expression that we have in common, I would say, would be this Glenfiddich uh, 18, 21, and 26, which is available at Beauty Free as well. Uh, and we get all the experimental series whenever they launch in the duty free the first. So currently we have the Glenfiddich Grand Cru apart from mm -hmm. these two being present at the, at the, at the duty free. Uh, Grand Cru is basically a 23 year old single malt whiskey finished in X bourbon and X sherry cast to a ratio of probably 90 10 and then mm -hmm. uh, finished in a French cuvee cast which is the cast used to age sparklings and uh, champagnes uh, from around the world. Uh, and that's a very special whiskey. If you haven't got your hands on that, you should definitely do that. Because mm -hmm. uh, Winter Storm, which was our last experiment, actually got sold out. And I get like a lot of calls, where can we get a Winter Storm on the But now it's gone. We don't make any more of it. So whatever is there, I mean, if you, if you need to buy it, buy it now because it's the right time. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, sorry. Now is not the right time, but whenever the travel <laughs> when, is... When you can travel again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, apart from these, I mean, we make a lot of country-specific Glenfiddich as well. If you talk about the core range, which is the age range, we have, after 26, we have a Glenfiddich 30-year-old, we have a Glenfiddich 40-year-old, and we have a Glenfiddich 50-year-old as well, uh, which is the bigger uh, age range. But, you know, now we are move, going towards more of a Grand Reach with the start of the Grand Cru, which is one of the first ones there. So the 20 year old, the whiskey in their 20s will be a part of the Grand Reach that we're going to have, mm -hmm. which is going to be coming very soon. Uh, I have a lot of experimental series whiskeys. Yeah, it's quite a range. <laughs> I have to say, and there's so many good whiskeys to pick out in that, but like you said, uh, that Project 20 uh, and the 15 and that 15 distillery edition is really good. I managed yeah. to grab a bottle of that. Wonderful. It really you know, put yeah. some hair on your chest. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, Angay, just to close out on a lighter note. So you mentioned IGTV as well. So I've been watching some of your uh, cocktail uh, videos and cocktail sessions. So I just love to, for you to talk a little bit about, you know, cocktails and whiskey and how things are changing. You did touch a little bit on it uh, earlier, but also if you could just leave us with uh, a handful of flavor combos because you know the lockdown and everything people are becoming mixologists at home that's it so any yeah. ideas uh we'd love to hear those ideas so it's actually quite good that people are jumping in you know trying their hands on cocktails because that's what the way is to evolve somewhere and you know try different flavors uh, i get in this get in this dialogue with a lot of people that single malts are not to be consumed in the form of a cocktail which I personally don't really believe in. I'm a huge advocate for cocktails and I believe that if the character of a spirit is good, you have a good quality spirit, then you can make a great cocktail as well. And so with Glenfiddich, we've been making different types of drinks and serves, but you know, I always try to keep it as minimalistic as possible, not to involve like 100 juices and throwing in a lot of syrups. So I try as natural ingredients as you can use. Probably to give you an example, and Old fashioned is a cocktail that is a classic for me uh, with any glenfiddich that I use. But what I do is I try to give it a variation. You know, instead of using sugar, I try to mm -hmm. use a spiced honey or maybe maple syrup or maybe uh, anything which is different, like a corn husk syrup. You know, could be really interesting. Okay. The outer shell of a corn, if you heat that mm -hmm. in water, gives you a very sweet liquid. So you know, just trying to replace my sugar with any substitute. And marrying it with something spicy is what gives that, you know, aromatic bitters are great to use and we've all been using angustra. But if you don't have that, you can make our own bitter with cinnamon or aniseed or clove and, you know, just marrying that with their old fashions. A simple mm -hmm. serve, just three ingredients, whiskey, something sweet and something spicy with a lot of ice. Uh, stir down and drink with a nice garnish of a orange peel, lemon peel, some relieving some juices will give you that open that freshness. Apart from that, I'm a huge believer of highballs, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I love my highballs uh, with, with Glenfiddich and other whiskeys. I think the Japanese drink it for a reason because it's really refreshing, especially for this weather, if you want to have a whiskey probably early in the evening or even in late and you're, you're not looking to like, for a good time. It's a great, great drink. It's called highball because it comes in a tall glass and it's related mm. to uh, having a ball. Uh, you know, this whiskey, some kind of aeration to it and some flavor. So how I make it, I, I pick up teas from different parts and mm -hmm. throw them into my whiskey, put some ice in it and then just like wilt it with some soda or some aromatic soda or different kinds of uh, tonic waters uh, you can use. You can use, a, you can use a nice coffee as well to make a highball. About mm -hmm. 10 mils of that coffee, your whiskey, some spice and wilt it up with some grapefruit. Could be a great combination, you know. So just easy, simple things. Uh, whiskey soda is a highball. Whiskey, old fashioned, you all know. Just, just keep these two drinks in mind and try variations of replacing soda with something, fruit, so on and so forth. And you get there. That's absolutely fabulous. I'm, I'm going to come back, watch this and make a few notes as well. Because it's been great mixing cocktails and stirring cocktails. But again, during the lockdown, right? You don't get half the thing. So these are fantastic ideas. Um, Yes, but thank you so, so much. I'm looking forward to YouTube making those uh, cocktails and uh, yeah, for some more cocktails, I'll, I'll, I'll keep sharing my specs with you. So try them at mm -hmm. home. So watch out for that, guys. I'll be sharing some of Angad's uh, IGTVs, making cocktails and uh, reviewing whiskeys. But until then, Angad, this has been absolutely fabulous. You know, it's always a pleasure to have you uh, with us, talking whiskey, sharing stories, uh, talking flavors, you know, it's been great. Uh, thank you for being with us. But guys, if you want to get in touch with Angad, I'm going to put all his details down in the description below. And also a few more links about Glenfiddich and uh, Grants, as well as the YouTube channels for Glenfiddich and uh, Grants Whiskey. So look out for that. Um, thanks again, Angad. Any last so uh, words for the viewers? Thank you so much, first of all, to you there for uh, planning this uh, uh, with me and also with my friend Jerome from the Balvini Distillery and it's been a great association with you. Uh, really love the way how easily you know you make things sound and without any fuss you can make the biggest things 
uh, those ones that are explained in the most simple way and that's what we really love about you the calm and peace at your on your face actually comforts the person sitting on the other side so huge thanks for that thanks for all of you for watching this and uh, if there any particular questions i had you can throw me a line on my insta handle and uh, we'll get back to you wonderful you Th thank you so much angar thank thanks you. for the kind words slanja slanja So guys, that was an absolutely fabulous session with Angad. He's always so entertaining. So much knowledge we get from these conversations. But until next week, I've got to ask you to please like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you'll know when we have a new video in this series. See you again next week with another episode in the series. Cheers.